Hello, my name is Andy DeCourt, and it's my privilege to serve as the pastor at Phoenix Christian Reformed Church. This midweek devotional is an extra connection at a time when our connections are, well, somewhat limited. Our limited connections, they're a burden, and they're a burden that damage our relationships. Children, like Nolan Richardson, are being born. Other children are growing up, and we're missing it. Other people have changed positions, lost jobs, found new jobs, and yet others, like Arlen Jordan and Dottie Diekman, have died since the last time we worshiped together without care of COVID-19. We have physical, financial, psychological, and other burdens. There's a lot of angst in our country right now. I'd like to share these words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ah, those are comforting words. What a delightful invitation. Come to me, Jesus says, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The next verse sounds pretty good, but it's a little mixed. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Well, we like the rest for our souls, but take Jesus' yoke upon us. How does a yoke come with rest? Doesn't a yoke imply working like a farm animal, pulling a plow or some other farm implement? By a yoke. Verse 30 is a little puzzling too. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, that sounds good, but how many Christians think of Jesus' yoke as being easy? G.K. Chesterton wrote, Christianity has not been tried and found wanting as it has been found difficult and left untried. In his book, The Spirit of the Disciplines, Dallas Willard writes something similar. The vast, grim cost of discipleship gets emphasized in Christian settings. But then he writes something also important. But it must not be left to stand as the whole truth. It's crucial to lay a clear emphasis on the cost of non-discipleship also. The cost of discipleship might be high, but the consequences of not paying the cost of discipleship, they're even higher. Life without being a disciple of Jesus will be burdensome, if not immediately, eventually. And there's no relief available without God's grace, without God's peace, without the comfort that Jesus provides. The secret of the easy yoke, that, that's our question. It involves living as Jesus lived throughout his life. He was always in union with God the Father. And spiritual disciplines are necessary for the revolutionary type of life that Jesus lived. I mean, remember, in the, Spirit, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said things like, You have heard that it's been said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Well, how can we possibly do that? It's not by living our normal American life and then when somebody hurts us, say, It's okay, I'll, I'll just love my enemy. That's, that's not how it works. Any more than you can just show up at a baseball stadium and be a pro baseball player by saying, well, today I'll be a baseball player. You've got you've to put in the reps. You've got to live the disciplined life of a baseball player. To live the disciplined life of Jesus, you've got to put in the reps. And that includes the spiritual disciplines. The core spiritual disciplines, the foundational ones, are reading the Bible and prayer. Jesus was constantly in God's word. He was constantly in prayer. That's the way Christians can live and find Jesus' yoke to feel easy and his burden light. Reading the Bible and prayer are also core practices for our upcoming season of small groups. In the coming months, we're going to have a season of small groups and we're going to finish our, our Roman sermon series before Advent starts in December. 
Well, if you've read Romans 12 and some of the following chapters, you know they're filled with numerous commands. Well, how can we follow them? And how can we follow them without them feeling like a burden? That's what we're going to look at in the weeks ahead. That's what we'll discuss in our small groups. How can we live the way we're called to live as Christians without feeling an overwhelming burden? So if you've filled out your small group survey, great. Thank you for that. If you haven't, uh, please do so in the, the link in the email accompanying this devotional. It'll make planning a lot easier if you could do that this week. So thanks, for, thanks in advance for doing that. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Right now, let's finish in prayer. Praise Jesus for calling us to dwell with him. May we have peace and rest from God through our burdens, whatever they might be.